Hey guys, it's Erica and I just unboxed my Milano Chrysum and my Varicosum Philodendrons. So uh, I, I was going to wait till the seller replied with what he um, rooted the plants in, but I'm almost 100% sure that it was rooted in soil. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them into soil right now. Their roots are still very tiny. They got little baby roots, but you could see that their tips are fresh and new, and you can see that they were they have soil on them. So that's why I think they rooted in soil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and root them or plant them. And I have the oh here's this one. I don't know if you could tell, but these roots look like they're dead, but this one's okay. So I'm probably gonna end up cutting this off, which makes me sad but it's all right so yeah i'm gonna plant them i have my soil mix here that i just made and it has coca core uh worm castings pumice perlite and orchid bark it has two sizes of orchid bark it has the um the fine size and then also medium because philodendrons like having bark to wrap their roots around and oh it also has a little bit of charcoal so yes i think this is going to be the best soil mix for them and hopefully they like it it's going to be very well draining though and that's ultimately the goal uh so i'm going to plant them into these terracotta pots that i got at goodwill <laughs> so pretty much you just want to get them settled in as quickly as possible because they were traveling for a while they're in like a new area they just want to they just want to be calm and settle in so i tried my best to take out the price tag it's not looking too good but we're just gonna we're gonna leave it like that let me get all my um tools out here Okay, so I have my disinfected shears here. I use 91% isopropyl alcohol, so you could just squirt that onto the shears. Make sure that you're not passing any germs onto the plant, that it would be sad to get. Um, so yeah, step one, just kind of analyze the roots, see if there's anything that needs to be cut off, and cut off any rot that you have because it does spread and you want to avoid it spreading to the roots that are already healthy. So I'm just going to cut this off and I know it's sad and painful, but cut above the rot. So don't leave any, don't leave any rot on there. Hopefully you can see and we're going to pod this baby now. He's all ready to go. If you have rooting hormone, now would be the time to use it. I think I should get out my rooting hormone. I am not prepared for this. I'm going to go get my rooting hormone now. This is the one that I used on my... Well, it's a, it's a new one, but... This is the one that I used for my Monstera, and it worked really well. So I think that it's going to work out for this one. And first thing you want to do is get, like, some, some kind of... Uh, surface that you could pour it out onto because you don't want to dip <laughs> dip the roots into the bottle because then you're gonna taint the bottle and you're gonna have to buy a new one so we're just gonna pour a little bit out onto here onto the roots Okay, kind of put a lot on there, but we got that. First thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of soil at the bottom. Actually, probably a lot because they, they're not gonna reach that deep down. Um, yeah, and I think these pots are a good size. You wanna have like as small of a pot as possible where your plant is still comfortable because you don't want to have them sitting in a bunch of like too much soil because the soil is not going to dry quickly enough and it's just going to be a bad bad day for the roots and the roots are already a little bit struggling so so i think that's the amount of soil i'm going to have in there 
At first, then we're gonna see what's going on. I'm gonna put in the varicosum first. It looks so good. There we go. And I'm gonna put this into a Ziploc bag so that it gets a lot of humidity because I, I think it will love that. I want the roots to grow as fast as possible. So I think the bag with a lot of humidity is gonna be really good for it. And I wanted to put a steak but I need it to fit into the plastic bag. So I think I'm gonna wait on that. So for the next one, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. They're pretty much the same size, so same process. This one's roots are fine, so just need to dip them a little bit. I have a new uh, thing. Oh, that's a lot. I'm just dipping the root tips in. Okay. And now he could be potted. Okay, here they are all potted up. This guy definitely needs something to help him stand, <laughs> but we're going to leave him like this for now. He's going to be in a bag, and I think they look so good. Um, I don't think I'm putting this one in a bag because his roots were kind of more substantial than his, and you can see that he has what would be aerial roots up here, and I want those to root and aerial roots uh, grow really well in the humidity of a bag so hopefully that will help those grow out I really think it will so that's gonna be fine and I'm just gonna water them I'm gonna use <laughs> I'm gonna use filtered water I'm just gonna water them all the way through to let it drain out and yeah I'm so excited this one's gonna have the humidity of a bag and this one is going to be I'm just gonna put him outside in my east facing porch so he could get a lot of sunlight i moved my oh actually he's here <laughs> i moved my uh my monstera outside and he's doing a lot better i think he really likes it outside so hopefully this one will like it outside as well philodendrons and monsteras are kind of similar but i don't know i think he'll like sunlight more than he would like the grow lights, if that makes sense. So we're gonna just put them next to each other out there. And yeah, hopefully all goes well. So I got my bag for the Vercosum and I just wanted to show you why I'm doing this. So I have a Syndapsis treubii rooting in a bag like this. And let me show you. You can see that his aerial roots are growing crazy. So they really like the humidity and it's just really, it's just a lot easier. I just feel safer doing it like this. Okay, so we're gonna put him in here and this bag is actually big enough that I might be able to put the steak, but we'll see. Oh, actually, I need to water it first. Let me water it. So I watered it, and I'm going to put him into his little bag. Normally, when I do this, I won't water the plant before. I'll just spray them <laughs> with the, uh, hold on. Let me, let me do this. I can't focus. I'm 
I don't want his I don't want his leaves touching the edge okay so normally when I do this I will spray the plant down until it's completely soaked but I just went ahead and watered it before I put it in here and this is gonna be his home for a little bit I'm gonna leave a little opening here so some fresh air can get in but it's gonna be really humid in here and his leaves aren't touching the edges or anything so he'll be fine and I'm gonna keep it in an east facing window so it's gonna get a little bit of direct morning sunlight and a lot of bright ambient light throughout the day so he's gonna do great and then this one is not gonna go into a little bag I'm just gonna put him outside with the uh, Deliciosa and it's gonna be great I just have to water him too but yeah that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update on how the plants were doing. So here's my varicosum and it's little bag in front of my east facing window. And then it's with my other publications. And then I decided to put my varicosum in a bag as well in front of the window because I was just too nervous to put it outside in you know that environment and this way it's still getting some actual sunlight instead of a grow light but it's in a little enclosed bag where it's safer for it to you know get its roots going and just become more established before I put it outside or anything like that but yeah they're doing pretty well